Hello there. In this video, you're going to learn about luxury retreats and about India where I'm standing right now in the Himalayas. I'm going to answer, are luxury health retreats worth it? What do you get out of coming to India? And who comes to retreats like this, which start at a thousand US dollars a night? Well, the first question I have to answer because it came through on my Instagram in the last 24 hours, and it's a fair question. And a girl, she's from Southeast Asia, said, I would rather have a luxury handbag than stay at a luxury retreat somewhere in the world. What do you think about that? Well, firstly, what I think about that is luxury handbags are all about where you live and the environment that you come from. If you get off the plane here in India, in Delhi like I did, and drive the eight hours up here to Ananda Wellness Retreat, you will soon realize that handbags mean nothing, they have no value here whatsoever, and human life and mental health are the priorities here. And one of the most amazing things I saw here was on the eight hour drive up to Ananda, we passed some of the poorest communities I've ever seen. There were dirt floors, there were dogs, there was a lot of rubbish, there was a lot of smoke from just rubbish being burnt off next to where little babies were sitting, next to where little toddlers were running around. It was a pretty confronting scene. But as I've said before, the most confronting aspect about the poor communities I saw in the huge drive up here is how happy everyone is. They're all smiling. They're all happy and there's no handbags inside. But look, we can't compare the Western world to the, to the poverty and the poor world that I am seeing here in India. But the situation is, would you rather pay, let's just call it $7,000 if you came here, a thousand US dollars a night on your own and did the basic wellness package or buy a handbag. The bottom line is that health is wealth. I know that's a really old fashioned saying, but it really, really is. And if you have your physical health and your mental health, which are two of the main things addressed here at Ananda, you can achieve anything you like. And in theory, if handbags are your end destination, you can buy as many handbags as you want. So look, I really feel that coming to a place like this, for many people, it's a once in a lifetime, but for many of the guests that I'm seeing here, they are regular visitors. They've been seven, eight times. I met um, a couple the other day who come twice a year. Can you imagine? They live in Europe and they have a big business. They have outlets all over the world. It's a retail business. And they came here to simply get away from it and to really zen out and look after themselves and look within. India, the premise of India is about looking within. Whether you're the poorest person or the wealthiest person, historically, India knows, Indian people know how to look after themselves. They have, let's call it a sixth sense or an intuition about health. But not only is this just a sixth sense, there are years and decades and generations of study. Ayurvedic health is something that Indian culture is based on and it is here at Ananda. It is a health system which has three different uh, pillars, I guess, that every human being is based on or we can be a mix of them. And this health path has really increased in popularity in the last few years. I guess it's fair to say globally, globally that a lot of people all over the world have been questioning Western medicine, questioning medicine itself, is it working? Is it right? And Ayurvedic is a different philosophy. And it really is based on every human being. So when I arrived here, one of my first session, sessions was with a doctor, an Ayurvedic doctor. This doctor was amazing. He's studied it for years. He's been doing it for years. And he said that his practice and his judgment of me is based on generations of people before him, before me, who are very similar, who had different life paths. And from them, he can then glean how best to support me in my future going forwards. And this is not about saying you're too fast, you're too fat, you're too slow, you're too this. This is not what Ayurvedic medicine is about at all. It's about saying, yes, you're really fast. You're really fit. You're really dynamic. You need to lose some weight, but let's talk about how to do that in a way that supports you. So one of the questions they asked or several are about food. And they said, forget calories, forget diets, forget health. If you could meet, eat one meal every night for the rest of your life, what would it be? If you could have anything right now, you know, a, a sort of breakfast, lunch, dinner, what would it be? What do you prefer, salt or sweet? What's your favorite thing to eat when you're absolutely starving? They go through this whole series of questions. Exercise, what's your favorite form of exercise? Do you enjoy being in a social situation or a very quiet environment? So there's, I think there's hundreds of questions that they ask you. And from that, they then start to understand who you are, 
what makes you tick and what's going to give you a better life and what they can recommend to support you the way that you are to be even better and blossom into the future. And this man was so qualified, I was quite amazed. It was better than a fortune teller as he sat there and he said, for example, I bet you're great at endurance sport. I've done triathlon. Um, he said, I bet that you're very social. You have a lot of friends. You like going out. That's true. He said, I bet if you had a choice, you would go out every night of the week. That's true. So it was really, really insightful for me to learn more about myself because then he went on to say how I can support myself, how it's important that I do take some downtime, but how I can do that within a social environment. So I'm still fulfilling my need to be social, to talk to people, to meet people, but perhaps doing it in a healthier, little bit calmer way to balance my life. And he really was like looking through a crystal ball as he talked about the next 10 years and even the next 10 years after that and what I can do to support my health, what I can do, uh, you know, what I can eat, what I can um, do with my sleep. Um, for example, he identified I'm drinking too much water because, you know, without oversharing, um, when I go to the bathroom, my urine is really clear. That is an indication, too much water. Who knew you could drink too much water? But when you're into fitness, you tend to drink a lot of water, I do, and he said, I'm actually overcompensating. It's meant to be yellow, and that's an indicator that things are good. Now, if you drink too much water, you wake up in the middle of the night, you interrupt your sleep. So there's a whole lot of, you know, really obvious things, but they're not obvious when you're living in the Western world and you're busy, and you know, and you just sort of don't really have time to think about them. So here at Ananda, they offer this Ayurvedic medicine, yoga. They offer Chinese medicine as well, which again has three pillars, is incredibly intriguing, um, and just you know, is an alternative way to deal with health ailments and to prevent health issues. Uh, emotional healing is very popular. Yoga, there's a whole pillar here. There's people that just come to improve their yoga. There's people who just come to improve their meditation. It's absolutely amazing what's here. And what is the most popular thing at this moment? The most popular thing that people are coming to Ananda for is emotional healing. Now, doesn't that say a lot about the world and where we're at right now? Particularly when you think about the fact this is the oldest health retreat in India at this sort of luxury level. It's been here 22 years and people come from literally all over the world. Of course, there's a lot of locals that come, but Europeans come, Australians, Southeast Asians. I think I've seen, you know, almost every, every country represented here. There's about 80 people here at the moment. Some are in couples, a lot are single, they're here on their own, a lot of women on their own, a lot of men on their own to be fair, lots of Americans are here. Um, so it's interesting that all over the world people are coming to heal. People are presenting in pain, whether it's from relationship breakdown, uh, stress, um, family challenges, financial challenges because of everything that's happened in the last few years, and of course health. There's a lot of people that come here who have had cancer, who have cancer, who have other major illnesses, and they're dealing with them. And Ayurvedic medicine also says that mental health and emotional wellness is one of the key foundations of our whole life and can actually cause a lot of health issues. So look, I, I really don't think this is heebie-jeebie. I think it's absolutely incredible. I've learned so much about myself. I've learned so much about my family because you do talk about your family a lot. And what does a day look like at Ananda? Well, there's basically an activity schedule all day. So if you want to, and if you're inclined, you can get up and attend yoga, I think is the first one at 7.15. I actually get up at six of my own volition and meditate and do some things before then, because that's just the kind of person that I am. So 7.15, there's a chanting session for 15 minutes, then it goes into a full meditation, and then you, sorry, a full yoga session, I beg your pardon, and then you go and have an amazing breakfast. I'll talk about the food in a minute. And then there's a whole variety of talks, of sessions. Um, there's boot camp. Um, there's just all different things all day. And then you can have your own individual schedule, which is what I've got. So I saw the physiotherapist, the Ayurvedic doctor, um, the uh, nutritionist, and the emotional healer basically on the first day to talk about my holistic health, to talk about everything in my body, everything in my mind, and how we could best spend the next seven days improving my life and educating me so that when I leave here, I leave with tools that will make my life better and also make life better for the people around me. And I mean, surely that is one of life's biggest objectives rather than say having a handbag. I love handbags too, don't get me wrong, but there comes a point in your life when being healthy is being wealthy and you know, giving to the people around you and giving to yourself and loving yourself 
is one of the most important things. And you know, a health retreat really can give you years and years and years of happiness, balance and wellness if you commit yourself to the process. And a handbag, let's be honest, they do go out of fashion. <laughs> So I hope I've answered that question. So who comes to these health retreats? Well, you probably are not surprised to know that tons of famous people have been here and continue to flow through the gates. There's a bit of a theory and lots of wealthy people. So you get a lot of people at the top of their game coming here, taking a week off to disconnect from their world and to stop working. Because a lot of those types of personalities are workaholics. The Wi-Fi here is not great. So if you're running it sort of a, an, an online business, you'd struggle to really keep it going here for the week. You have to let go. They're forcing you to let go. So the famous people that have been here include Oprah Winfrey, Gerard Butler, Deepak Chopra. That's an interesting one because you would have thought he is so zen, he wouldn't need to come here. But again, it harks back to every single person can benefit from time to themselves, time to look within and time to really invest in their health and in themselves. And you know, even just sitting and asking yourself, am I happy with my life? Am I happy with my relationships? What do I want for the next year? What do I want for the next five years? What are my goals? I mean, we just get so caught up in the Western world that we really do forget about a lot of this. And there is a magnificent swimming pool here where you can just sit and chill. Lots of people do that. It's really quite very Instagrammable. It's put all over my Instagram if you wanna have a look. And I met you know, a lovely um, couple of guys there, a couple, and they were sitting there and they were telling me they're from Europe, um, from Belgium in fact, and they come here every year. We talked about other um, health and wellness retreats that they have been to, but they said this is an integral part of their relationship and who they are and their business life. And they said, if they're not here, you know, they may not necessarily be doing so well in the corporate world. I also met another man who's from Paris. He's really interesting. He spends lots of time traveling all over the world. And what's really nice here is that people open up and they talk, but you don't have to. A lot of people don't want to talk. They don't want to mix with people. And that's fair enough too. There's also a few Russians here. Um, yeah, there's just a whole eclectic mix of people. Now, other famous people that have been, I will think about in a minute, but there's, there's tons of them. And I heard this really funny story because I know that a lot of Indian um, people and a lot of people, when they think of India, think of cricket, especially in places like England and places like Australia. And apparently there was a very, very famous cricketer who came here a few years ago with his fiance. They went, so I beg your pardon, with his girlfriend. They were not yet engaged. And it was over Christmas and New Year when Ananda gets really busy, which is interesting because I guess a lot of people want to get away from the alcohol, from the party scene of Christmas, New Year, perhaps, maybe even get away from family, which a lot of people you know, can understand, and come to a retreat like this. And the whole place was teeming with celebrities. There were two different lots of celebrities, as well as this really famous, I think he was a captain of the cricket team, and he came here and the press at the airport in Delhi realized that all of these famous people, these two groups of celebrities and this cricketer with his uh, girlfriend were all heading to Ananda and just assumed that there must be something going on and made up a story that the, the cricketer was getting engaged here in Ananda to his partner. He wasn't, but they made up that story because they just assumed that's what was happening because there were so many celebrities. So everyone here finds that story really funny because it was on the headline of the paper, this certain person getting engaged when actually none of that was true. And the celebrities were here having their own sweet Zen time as was the cricketer and his girlfriend. There was nothing to do with an engagement or a wedding, but it just goes to show the power and the cachet of Ananda, even within India itself. And of the press. I used to be a member of the press and we used to do silly things like that and I'm glad I'm not doing that anymore. But the point is that yeah just just really you know a lot of famous people do come here and a lot of people uh, when they become famous because I used to be a celebrity interviewer I've interviewed a ton of famous people including people like Tom Cruise, John Travolta, Kylie Minogue, On It Goes, JLo um, and, and they're amazing. All, all of the people that I, I um, have interviewed have been amazing and it has been a great honor. But what I found in almost all of them is that when they reach that level of success, they realize that there's another mountain to climb. You know, they had this perception that if they had that gold album, if they had that $10 million, if they had whatever it was they're aiming for, everything would change. But in fact, nothing changes. And in fact, life can be tougher because they have to maintain that position in their own view, otherwise they're going backwards. So life for famous people and wealthy people can actually be a lot more challenging than for the average person. And a lot of people really don't understand that, but that's why we can see, you know, the struggles of some really famous people like the Michael Jacksons, the Prince, even Matthew Perry, God bless him. You know, it's not easy. 
and drugs you know can come in the way alcohol comes in the way relationships they can find it really hard so a place like Ananda is a godsend to famous people because they can be invisible here everyone wears silk pajamas which are also on my Instagram I didn't wear them for this video um, but that, that basically takes away the brands takes away what you look like and it means that everyone's on the same playing field so if you're famous it means that you know people are no longer judging you oh you know he looks a bit fat he looks a bit this he looks a bit that none of that goes on here everyone is on the same page and there's no judgment which for someone who's really famous can be such a relief and as well as i'm in a block here a guest block which is gorgeous with this incredible view isn't it just magnificent and all of the guests are here but there are also villas i think there's three of them behind and one is a one bedroom villa and there's two two bedroom villas and they have their own pool and are really really private and you can even have your food delivered there so if you're super famous and you don't want to see anyone which is the case with a lot of famous people they can just go there and really have their own sweet time and not see anyone unless they come in and out for treatments and there's also a palace which has um, it was the former Maharaja's palace which is sort of the backdrop to this whole Ananda estate which is just glorious and this, there's one suite there that's decorated in British tones. I think Liz Hurley came here and I guess, I don't know, but I guess she may have stayed there because there's a beautiful four poster bed with a canopy. There's a huge bathroom, beautiful windows overlooking the palace, sort of a deck that you can walk around. I mean, you know, it's absolutely glorious. And in fact, I know Liz Hurley goes to a lot of retreats because I've actually seen her at another retreat that I stayed at called Shiva Som in Thailand, but that was a long time ago. And in fact, Kate Moss was there too. So my point is that, you know, famous people People come here but everyone can benefit from coming to a health retreat I don't know that everyone can benefit from a new uh, handbag just not sure but the other thing I wanted to say before we go is that really this is about prevention and I come back to mental health mental health being happy having clarity having positive relationships positive communication not using drugs and alcohol to suppress our feelings. I don't know anyone who doesn't do it. Or food, food is another big one. A lot of people come here to lose weight. And generally speaking, overeating can be something that we're doing to make ourselves feel good. So drugs, alcohol, food, they're all stimulants. You know, I'm not feeling good, boom, I need to have something. And you know, I, I certainly enjoy a couple of glasses of wine and it's been absolutely wonderful to just not have any alcohol here, not to see any alcohol, it is here. If you really want it, there's certain places you can have a glass of wine. And I like that too, because if you're coming here, I went to a retreat a number of years ago and I just got divorced. In fact, it was 14 years ago, a long time. And um, I was devastated, frankly, and I needed it. You know, I wanted, I guess I didn't need, but I wanted a glass of wine and I said, absolutely no problem. Have a glass of wine with dinner each night, that's fine. In actual fact, even in that situation, I stopped having it. I really didn't want to have it. But it's interesting that they still offer it. And I know that with smoking, uh, if you come here and you're giving up smoking, the same thing. They have a smoking area, they don't want people to smoke. They don't encourage it, or vaping for that matter. But if you are you know, getting off that addiction, as we all know, sometimes you just need to wean yourself off going cold turkey is really hard. So places like this do accommodate for it. So look, I just think, um, you know, there, there are just so many benefits from coming to India. There's so many benefits from coming to Ananda. I'm just so blessed and feel so lucky that I'm here. And I really would encourage you to look, and you don't have to come to Ananda to get the benefits that I'm talking about. There are health retreats everywhere in the world. Most countries have them. Australia has them, England has them. They're all over Europe and they're of every price range. I know if you look on my website, reneesworld.com.au, I went to Sri Lanka and I stayed at a health retreat that was very affordable. It was also Ayurvedic. Look, it's nothing compared to Ananda. Ananda is elite, it's luxury, it's incredible, but not everyone can afford it, which I understand. And the retreat that I went to was equally like amazing, challenging. There was no air conditioning. I think I called it, is this, the, the headline was, is this the toughest retreat in the world? And you know, it was tough because there was no air conditioning, as I just said, mosquitoes everywhere, which I didn't like. Um, completely vegetarian food, um, you had to walk on the beach every day. It was quite rigid, the sort of routine, but I still, I lost weight. I gained clarity. I didn't drink for like two months after going there. Um, so, you know, it, it was absolutely wonderful. You know, the, a, a health retreat, investing in yourself is always the right decision. And I think the ultimate decision that we all need to focus on at this moment in time, the world is upside down. The world is in chaos. I mean, there's two wars going on as I stand here in 2023 in November, which is not good. 
is that by loving ourselves, then we can give and love other people. And you know, people say to me, how do I love myself? It's not easy, is it? I mean, it sounds so simple, but coming somewhere like this is an act of love for yourself. And sitting with yourself and saying, where am I at in my life? Where are my, where are my life goals? That is a great way to do it. And even, you know, there's a lot of talk here, sorry to be a bit esoteric, but about where do we go when we die? That is a topic of conversation here. It's a topic that I actually talked to someone about, um, my doctor, my Ayurvedic doctor today. Um, and, you know, of course, there's a lot of talk here about the afterlife, about previous lives. There's all, you know, everything is open for conversation here. And I think that is really, really positive um, because I think we all need to be open. And, you know, I truly believe that we, you know, are spiritual beings having a human experience. And sorry to be esoteric again, but the truth is that, you know, our human experience is highlighted. When we sit with ourselves, we get out of the rat race, out of our regular nine to five, it's still gonna be there when I go back. You know, I am not missing anything. And that's one of the other lessons for a personality like mine is to let go and not hang on to everything happening back there and worry about what I'm missing out on because you never really miss out on anything. The most important thing is not to miss out on your own life, to learn to be present and to love yourself. Namaste.